Hello and welcome back to this Photoshop Element 7 tutorial. Hopefully you've watched the previous two tutorials. Um, first one was on the organizer window which is what we see here and the second one was using these uh, quick fix buttons down here. What we're going to be doing now is we're going to be taking a look at the more advanced editors uh, and those are the quick fix editor, the full editor and the guide edit. So the first thing we need to do is to select a picture to work on and I'm just going to choose this picture here um, of a cruise ship in a harbour and so you click on the photograph and then just click on the quick fix button. As you'll see I've actually got my screen set up to show two images side by side uh, before and an after the way to do that if yours doesn't look the same is if you just come down here you've got a drop down box before and after horizontal you can choose before only just get one picture after only or before and after horizontal or before and after vertical so obviously it depends which shape your picture is if it's not right then obviously choose the vertical one okay so we'll just choose the horizontal and that just allows me to look at both pictures at the same time at the moment we haven't made any changes so both pictures are the same and what you'll see is you can actually move the pictures around a little bit if you need to and then just down here we have a little zoom window so if you want to see the whole picture then you can just move it along there we go and now we can see both pictures so just looking at the top here uh, we have uh, three tabs again it says full edit quick edit and guided edit we're in the quick edit mode at the moment um, and just if you look down the tabs we have general fixes um, the lighting a color if these aren't expanded then all you do is you click on the little arrow and it will expand them or reduce them so if we just have a look at the top first of all uh, the first button here is auto and basically it's worth giving this click there's quite often the auto button will do the job very well so we'll just have a go at that and just click auto and there you go that's really added a nice contrast to the picture and it's looking a lot better already the sky's still a little bit wishy-washy but I think we might be able to do something about that in a, in a short while if you want to you can actually increase the effect of the the, um, the auto fix by dragging this slider which might there you go, just make a little bit of difference to the picture. And when you're happy with the results, just click on the tick to commit the changes. Okay. If you want to, you can actually go down and tweak those. You've got this thing that says light and shadows. That's useful if your picture's a little bit dark. There you go. So it just kind of lowers the contrast a wee bit. And then you've also got dark and highlights. So if your picture's a bit too bright, there we go. We can bring back the highlights a little bit. It actually works very well. Uh, normally on a digital photograph it's actually quite difficult to um, to bring back the highlights if they're over. And then if the mid-tones look a bit clogged up and a bit heavy we can just brighten the mid-tones up a little bit or make them darker using this one here. So it's very much a case of sort of just a trial and error and having a look. Um, next one down is colour. Saturation will just basically make the picture more vibrant. But beware if you go too far it will just look completely false um, if you don't if you make a mistake you know just bring it back to the center again there we go uh, hue will change the actual color of the image there you go so again just bring it back to the center and temperature will is kind of suggest what type of time of day it was taken um, so be careful with some of these because they can just make your picture look a bit silly and tint will do a similar thing there you go it's like, look, it's like looking through a pair of rose tinted spectacles if that's the way you want to remember it sharpen if you want to use the sharpen by all means do so we'll just get the cliff back there there we go by all means do so uh, but what I would recommend before you do is you double click on the zoom tool and that will take your image to 100%. When you're using the sharpen tool, you really need to be at 100% to see uh, how much damage, if you like, you're doing to the picture. If you go too far, 
your pictures will just not look terrible. They'll look like um, jigsaw puzzles. So you need to be a bit careful with this uh, control. So I recommend you know bringing your image up to 100%. When it's at 100%, if you want to get it back down to normal, two options. You can use the slider just here, or a quick and easy way is to double click on the hand tool. That will There we go. Double click on the hand tool will bring it back down to normal size. Uh, 33% in this case. Okay, so that's the sort of quick fix. There's just one more little one I'll show you down here at the bottom. I'm not sure how well it will work on this uh, on this boat, but you've got a red eye removal tool here. This is a tool for whitening teeth. Um, this this is an interesting one. Make a dull sky more blue. Um, so if we just click on there. You've got this circle now if you want to make this circle larger this is the circle that will paint in the sky if you like um, if you want to make it larger the easiest way to do it you can either go up here to the brush size and change the diameter just go into the picture and it will see how big it is there we go um, you can also change what's called the hardness uh, the softness of the brush and the hardness of the brush uh, defines how uh, solid the edges if you like um, so choose a size you know that you can kind of work your way around the, the sort of the mountains here if you want to change it quick and easy way that I like to use is you've got the left and the right square bracket keys if you press your left square bracket key your brush size will get smaller and this applies to everything in Photoshop anything that's got a brush size on it and if you press your right square bracket key it will get uh, larger so there we go choose a reasonable size I'm not sure how well this work on the sky whoops we've gone into the, uh, the boat a bit there but uh, there you go that's made the sky quite dramatic but as you can see we've actually gone into the ship a little bit so what I'm going to do is just zoom in to that area around the ship really quite close around there and if you go back to the brush there you go, there's your selection. Make your brush nice and small. Remember I said to use the left square bracket key to do that. And what you need to do is go to the top here where it says minus and it says subtract from selection. If you click on that, go to where you've got your overrun if you like and you can, there we go, sort that out. There we go. Okay, click the hand. There we go. That's uh, that was a very quick and easy way to enhance the sky. It really is an amazing tool, actually. Um, so it auto selects the sky for you and it makes it blue all in one go. So that's kind of a really useful thing to have a little play with. Um, then you've got the black and white high contrast tool. It basically, if you just paint over something like this, it will just make it, as the name suggested, and increase the contrast. And turn it to black and white so kind of a limited uh, thing but you never know you might find a use for it okay so that is the quick uh, editor and on the next session we will be having a look at the full editor which is uh, gives you the maximum amount of control and that really is more comparable to the editors that you would find in say photoshop cs series um, they're under CS4 I think at the moment so and then we've also got the guided edit guided edit is quite interesting because it's a useful tool for actually teaching you how to use uh, some of the um, editing um, things in the full edit mode so it's quite useful the guided edit so that concludes this tutorial on the quick edit uh, mode I hope you've enjoyed it and we will see you on the next one